We got the authentication working and we're able to implement the ability to have access to the logged in users entity throughout the request in the last couple of videos. Let's now do some refactoring to make our code a little bit prettier. The first thing that I think we should refactor is the way we interact with sessions. We are accessing the session super global in multiple files as you can see right here. I want to basically abstract this away into its own session class. We also have this start session middleware that sets the session cookie params and then starts the session. It also has some validation here and so on. And I think it would be good if we extracted this into its own method within that session class that we're going to create. So let's write the code that we want to build basically writing out how we want our code to look like and then we can make it work that way. So we could essentially take all of this out. So we might have something like this session start and this will handle all the logic to start the sessions for us. Then we can get rid of the session write close from here and instead we can again call some kind of close method on the session object. We can name this either close or write or save. I'm gonna call it actually save. Great, so as you can see our code already looks a lot better. So let's inject some sort of session class in our constructor. We're going to inject some sort of session interface object and we're going to create the session interface contract or interface and then create the implementation of it. Now you might be asking why we're using an interface here and not a concrete implementation directly. The answer is that we may want to add different session stores later on. Right now, yes, we will be using the default PHP's native sessions, but what if we wanted to change that later or maybe write tests and needed the in-memory solution and so on. Having interfaces makes a lot of things easier because we can then just swap the implementation at runtime by creating another class like in-memory session that implements this interface and use that instead of using the native PHP sessions. So let's create this interface within the contract namespace. And we know that we need at least two methods in there, start and save. So let's add start and we'll add save. Both of these methods don't need to return anything. So we'll set the void as the return type. Now let's bind this interface to a concrete implementation within the container bindings because when we're injecting it in here, the container needs to know how to resolve this dependency. So we need to tell the container how to do that. So we'll do session interface class and we'll simply new up some kind of session class that we're going to create. So let's create this uh, class now and I'll put it within the app namespace. And this is going to be our PHP's native sessions implementation. This is of course going to implement the session interface and we need to provide the implementation for both of these methods. Now for the start method, we can paste in the code that I copied earlier from the start session middleware. And for the save, we just need to call session write close. Now we can also extract the session status check from here into its own method. So we can basically take this and call something like is active method, which will return true or false if the sessions have already been started and if the session is active. So we're going to create this method, which returns Boolean. And we also need to add this method to the interface. But first, let's return the result of this and let's copy the definition and put it into the session interface. Now, the reason I extracted this into its own method is because we may want to check if the sessions have already been started or if the session is active somewhere else in the code. So it's good to have a separate method that handles that. I also want to adjust the exception message here to include the file name and line. Now, I also want to uh, sort of configure these uh, session cookie parameters. I want this to be configurable and not hard coded in here. We want to set this in our config file. So why don't we accept some sort of configuration here, something like private read only array options. And then in here, we're simply going to access the secure HTTP only and same site from the options. So we'll do secure and by default, we'll set this to true. Then we'll do options, HTTP only, and we'll also set this to true by default. Let's format the code and we'll do the same here, but instead of true, it will be lax 
by default. Now, the way we can pass the options here is that within the container bindings where we are instantiating the concrete session implementation, we can pass the config here. So let's inject our config class in here, and then we can simply do config get session. Now we just need to add the session section within our app.php configuration file. So we can add the session entry here, and we need to have secure, true, HTTP only, true, and same site, lax. Maybe we can also set the name of the session so it doesn't use the default uh, PHP session ID name. So maybe we can do something like name equals app name underscore session. And we can extract the app name from the app name environment variable because we have that. I just want to replace spaces with underscores and change the casing to all lowercase. So we'll do app name equals string to lower SDR replace. We'll replace space with underscore on the env app name. And actually this doesn't make sense to be called app name. We can maybe call this app snake name or something like that or we could call it session name but we might want to use this snake name somewhere else later on so let's just call it app snake name and put it in here now just a quick note that we could use environment variables for these three options as well i just don't think that we need to at this point because i want this app to always use these options if we ever need to make changes to them and make them configurable through environment variables then we can do those changes at that time but for now we're just building the flexibility to be able to store these configurations within our app.php config file and then at a later time we can use environment variables if we wanted to at least now our session class does not have these hard-coded all right so i think this is looking pretty good so far just one thing that i want to let you know is that this options array here is a good candidate to be an object like a dto so if you're up for it go ahead and refactor this to use a php object instead of an array and then define the necessary properties in your dto I will do that off the recording and if you need a refresher watch the DTO lesson that we covered in this series. The link to that lesson will be in the description. All right, and here is the config object class that I created behind the scenes. It's called session config. I put it under the data objects namespace. It has four public read only properties, name secure, HTTP only, and same site. And for the same site, I decided to use an enum class. So if I inspect the same site enum, we see that we have lax, none, and strict. Then I've also adjusted our session class to inject the session config instead of array and access those properties instead of accessing the magical array keys. And the final change was within the container bindings, we had to adjust how we pass the config to the session class. So now instead of passing an array, we are instantiating a new session config class and pass the configuration options there. If you did it differently, it's fine. Don't worry about it. It doesn't have to be exactly the same way as I did. So I think this should work. Before we test this out, I want to also add a minor adjustment to our session class. The session start here actually returns a boolean true or false based on the documentation. So if for some reason it was unable to start the session and returned false, we want to have handling for that. So why don't we do something like if session start returned false then throw the session exception stating that we were unable to start the session we also need to set the session name that we get from the options and we can do that before starting the session so what we can do is that we can check if the session name is not empty meaning that if it's given within the options only then we can set the session name and we can set the session name by calling session underscore name function and pass the session name that we want to set it to. All right, so let's actually test this out to make sure that it still works. So let's open the browser. We are at the login page. Let's inspect the element. We have this PHP session ID, which is the old session ID, which was generated before we made the changes. So I'm just going to delete that and refresh the page. And as you can see, now we have xpennies underscore session with the generated session ID. Now let's try to log in. And sure enough, 
the session ID was regenerated. We are using HTTP only, secure, same site is set to lax, and everything seems to be working as expected. All right, so we're one step closer to our session refactor. Now we need to refactor the actual session super global usage. So let's search for the session super global again, and we see that we're using it in quite a lot of places. Let's start with the auth class. So here we're trying to get the user ID from the session and then uh, within attempt login we are setting the user ID and are also regenerating the session ID. And then in the logout method we are unsetting the session. Let's refactor this to how we want our code to look like and then we implement it that way. So in here instead of unset sessions we can do something like session forget user and we'll have the session object have the forget method, which will unset the user key from the session super global. Then let's scroll up. Instead of the regenerate ID, we can do something like this session regenerate. And then instead of setting the user to the session that way, we can do something like this session put user user get ID. We should probably also regenerate the session ID upon logout since it also qualifies as an authentication state change. So we can do this session regenerate right here. Then let's scroll up to the user method and here instead of doing this we can simply do this session get user. So let's inject the session interface in our constructor here. So we'll do private read-only session interface. And let's create these methods. So we have the get method. We also have the generate method and the put method. And also the forget method. Now the get, put, and forget accept key. So let's change that to this. And for the get, I also want to be able to return the, some sort of default value in case it's not set in the session. So we can do mixed default equals to null. And by default, it will return null. The return type here is also mixed because we don't know what's going to be stored in the session. The regenerate will return boolean. And the put method is going to accept the key and mixed value and it's not going to return anything and forget is not going to return anything either. So let's now implement these methods in our concrete implementation. So let's add these methods right here and implement them one by one. Now the forget is easy. We just simply need to call unset on the session super global passing the key. The regenerate is also easy. We can simply return session regenerate ID. The put method is also easy. We just need to set the value to the session this way. And we're just left with the get method. The get method has to check if the key exists in the session super global. And if it does, then it needs to return it. If it does not exist, it can return some sort of default value that we pass, which is set to null by default. So we can do something like this return array key exists pass the key and the session as the arguments and if this returns true then we'll simply access the key this way otherwise we'll return default now you might be asking why i'm using array key exists and not something like eset we actually talked about the difference between the array key exists and the eset uh, functions in the very beginning of this series in the first section Basically, eset will return true if the key exists and is not null, where array key exists will return true if the key exists even if it's set to null. In this specific case, eset would also work, but I prefer to use array key exists in abstractions like this. In fact, we can actually make this even better and extract this into its own method, something like this has key, and we can create the has method which accepts the key as an argument and returns boolean. And here again, you could either use the eset function or use the array key exists function. Great, so we have refactored the auth class as well to not use the session super global and some of the session functions. Before we do more refactoring, let's test this out to make sure that it still works. So let's log out, this works, let's log in, and that works as well.
Awesome. So let's search for the session super global again and let's now refactor the auth and guest middlewares. So for the auth middleware, I thought about this and I think that we can actually combine auth and authenticate middlewares. Authenticate middleware simply adds the user object to the attribute that we get using the sessions. And the auth middleware simply checks if the user ID is set in the session and if not, it then redirects. So I think that we can do both of the things in the same middleware. We can simply take the authenticate middleware part, this part right here with attribute and uh, auth user method call and put it right here. Because essentially if the user is not logged in, we are already redirecting the user. And if the user is logged in, which means that this doesn't get executed, then we might as well just pass along the user object with the request because we know that user ID is set in the session. The thing I'm going to do here to improve is that we're actually going to move this and instead of checking the session directly here we'll simply do something like this all right so let's inject the auth interface here so we'll do private read only auth interface let's format the code and let's delete the authenticate middleware because we no longer need that we also need to remove it from the middleware config file and we should be good to go. Now for this to work, we actually need to swap these lines right here. If the user is logged in, we need to continue with the request and pass along the user object. If user is not logged in, then we need to redirect. So we're going to swap these two lines to make this work. Now let's open the guest middleware and here we can inject the session interface. So we'll do private read only session interface session. And instead of checking not empty session user, we can do this session get user. And this will return the user ID from the session. And if the user ID is set and not a false value, it's going to redirect the user to the home page. Otherwise, it's going to continue handling. The request so let's test these out to make sure that they still work so let's open the browser we're going to log out that works as expected let's try to log in that works as expected as well let's try to access the register and login pages which is handled by the guest middleware let's log out and try to access the home page which is handled by the auth middleware so it seems like everything is working as expected Cool. So the next step is to refactor the rest of the session super global usage, which is from the old data middleware and validation errors middleware and the validation exception middleware. We're going to continue with this refactoring in the next lesson with a minor refactor to our auth controller and the refer URL. So this is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you think that this was a good video and it was helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. It really helps me out and helps the channel grow faster. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next one.